Um, it's been a really full couple of days, to say the very least. There's a million words we could use to describe today, but I wanted to hear from the, from the two of you today before you, you left to, to um, grace us with, you, with your thoughts of what you're feeling to begin with before we get to, you know, um, takeaways. Okay, so I'll start. Um, I, I think the word that I would use um, living this con like living this conference would be rejuvenated. Like I feel like, I know there were like really deep and heavy conversations that I had with pretty much, like with a lot of people. Um, but I do feel rejuvenated and I feel like I'm ready to kind of start again <laughs> when I go back. To be honest, when I was coming here, um, I was telling a few people that I spoke with that my sister is like, I think, I, you know, I, I know you love the space that you work in. It's good. Your work is supportive. DCA, uh, Diversity Council Australia is really good to work with. But I feel like you can't do this for too long. Like, it's, it's, it's emotionally, the emotional labor is too much. Um, so by the time I got here, um, I was like, I'm over a lot of things. Um, but I do feel rejuvenated after having the conversations, listening to what people are doing um, to hold, at, you know, the work that they're doing, the advocacy work, um, the activist work that people are doing in various spaces and the changes that they're making. I feel like I want to be part of the change. I feel like change is coming. Um, I remember when I started doing work as, as a critical race scholar, you know, I don't know, 20 years ago, I actually never had a conference in Australia where I had these con conversations. All my conferences that I went to were overseas. Yeah. And I could have these conference, these discussions, but they were overseas. And so to have them in Australia is, is really, I feel like even in my, in my lifetime as a migrant in Australia, that change, I can see that change. Um, I also feel very encouraged that, um, you know, our counter narratives will one day be the dominant narrative. So the dominant narrative of race in Australia will cease to be the white majoritarian narrative. And I think it, we just need to have a few more of these kind of conferences where we share ideas and progress our thinking as well. So yeah, I feel rejuvenated and encouraged. And um, I like the fact that we weren't too scared to go to race. Um, I was talking to some people here as well. I just wish like some of my colleagues and friends who are so-called allies would, could actually come into these spaces and hear how different the narrative is in these spaces because often when you're there, I mean, white adjusting is a real thing. I know I said earlier that I don't white adjust anymore, but you still do it, right? Like you still have to think, well, I really want to say, you know, this act is racist. I could say that here, and I wish, like, we could create these, um, you know, people are calling these kind of spaces third spaces where you create those, um, you know, racially and psychologically safe spaces for yourselves as, marginal, as uh, people who are historically marginalized groups. So um, I just wish sometimes, you know, people could be little flies in the wind on the walls and could hear how we speak about our truth in these spaces as well. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Hey, Bill. Bill, what are you, what are you feeling? I agree with everything what the doctor has said. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a plan to catch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think at the end of the day, it's about, um, you know, I think I said it earlier along, like, I think, you know, we do a bit of this in our own community. You know, we meet for... Um, you know, on education or health conferences and the feeling's the same, you know what I mean? And that's what I, the takeaway is, is that we're all talking about the same issues. We come from it from different walks of life, you know what I mean? Different modes of getting here. But I think at the end of the day, you can't take away the fact that when mobs come together and talking about stuff that our own lived experiences around some really, really powerful, really, really important topics, um, um, you know, for all shades of whatever, you know what I mean, all experiences. Um, it's nourishment for the soul, you know what I mean? And I can live my authentic self in this space. And I think that's really important uh, for me. The takeaway is, you know, we're all talking about similar issues, but we come from it from a different perspective. Also, I just want to say, I think one of the questions early on, one of the speakers, or one of the questions that came from, the, from uh, somebody in the, um, the attendees about, well, what do you do? you know, when um, you're feeling run out, run down or worn out or whatever. And I think at the end of the day, I don't have a choice. 
I think, um, if because I'm talking about the lives of the future of my children and my grandchildren and things like that, and and I was saying to brother boy up there, you know, uh, far and about, you know, I'll hold you up if you hold me up, you know what I mean? That's what it's about. It's about, you know, we don't have a choice. We can go back, I can go back to my home or whatever it is and live a very middle class sort of bourgeois life, um, but that's a disservice to my ancestors and that's a disservice to the movement. So at the end of the day, you know, the storytelling that I tell or that we tell, do it with caution because it does, it is a burden at times, but don't be afraid to tell it. And, you know, I'm excited. I go away today, I'm excited, I'm, I'm fired up again, you know what I mean? What's the, what's the saying that, you, uh, that we've come up with for this? <laughs> <laughs> the movement. I always say the movement's in good order, you know, the movement's doing <laughs> fine. We're in, the movement's in great shape, and it is. Yeah. It's the movement. And I want to see other mobs, you know what I mean? I want to see my African sisters here, you know, you all might want to see our mobs all get on the same page and it's the movement, it's about being on the side of right, you know what I mean? And that's what I believe. Thank you, thank you, Phil. Um, I'll, I'll briefly share one of my favourite moments before I ask you some, um, some of your key learnings and takeaways. It was last night at dinner. Um, it was ad hoc, last minute, we didn't even know we were going to meet up, I just called Dr. Virginia to see, what, what are you doing for dinner? Are you sort of, she's like, oh yeah, I'm just out with some friends and we're having a, having a bite to eat. I'm like, great, I'll call Phil, I'll grab Khalees and um, you know, Sophie and I will go down. And um, it was this vibrant, full, vivid conversation, like at full volume. Um, and it was just so exciting to be a part of that as it was. But then there was a moment as Phil was sitting in between Sophie and I at the table and you didn't even say anything. You just put one hand on my shoulder and one hand on Sophie's shoulder and you just, just gave me a, just a nod and a look and it was just that moment where you told me that you were happy with what was going on. That was the absolute best moment for me for the last couple of days. Thank you, Phil. That meant everything. Thank you. That meant everything to me. Well, I, I, it's a beautiful feeling when you, um, you know, what I take away that, what I just loved that last night was there were other people I'd never met before and I was in a space and I was listening to the experiences of our sisters from Vietnam, Africa, talking about the system and what it had done. And I was sitting between you and Sophie and we were sharing food and I said to you, I'm going to keep come back. When I said I'm going to come out, because the, I'm going to keep drinking from the coffee cup that's flowing. And I think it's a beautiful thing that um, I don't have to, we don't have to hide. We don't have to edit ourselves. Thank you. Before, before you need to jet off to the, to the airport, Phil, I was going to ask uh, both of you, um, what are some of the takeaways you've? you've you're taking with you that you'd like to share and emphasize with the friends? Um, I think for me as well, the one of the key takeaways from this conference is kind of the significance of race. And I know um, people, like I always say, or people, you know, they get tired from the, listening to me talk about race this, race that. But I kind of say race and racism in Australia, it's so pervasive, it's in everything that we do. And I think this conference has really shown me that. So for me, just the, the significance of race or the significance of putting on a, a racial uh, or a race lens to all things across anything, whatever we're talking about in Australian society because race inequities are real you know, and um, we really do need to talk about them. So for me, that's the important thing. So this wasn't a conference on race necessarily, mm -hmm. and yet it, to me, it was the thread that came through everything that we talked about that we did at this conference. So um, yeah, the significance of race and, and casting a race lens of things is is something that, that, that I'm taking with me. Um, another key takeaway, and I know I've said this word like a gazillion times and I'll say it again. Um, the, again, the significance of the counter narrative. Um, because otherwise, you know, our story is always being told, you know, um, for us. And um, even if we don't get often given the microphones, I always say to people, you know, people that say, oh, you know, like, 
I like this because I, I gave, you know, I, I like working with people of color, or people from cult communities, and I like giving voice to people, and I'm like, oh, you just lost me because nobody gives me a voice. I have a voice. I just need. Thank you. <laughs> I just need the microphone so that everybody <laughs> hears what I'm saying, and I need the platform, and I need the speaking position. I don't need a voice. Everybody has a voice, right? Yeah. And I feel like we, we, um, they had the microphones this this past two couple of days. So, just that counter narrative to be um, to be told out there. I know that you know there's going to be um, things that you'll post online and do all of this stuff. So it's not just stopping here. That counter narrative is getting out there, and I think that's really important. Um, so I think to me those were the and also kind of like again the significance of the third space. Um, you know, like just that solidarity, just that racial safety, that psychological safety of spaces like this is also very, very important. And that's what rejuvenates people like me. So that's what I'm taking away. And the friendships. Thank Met you. so many cool people. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the takeaways. Um, I was just thinking, um, uh, I was like, I talk about my mum a lot, and I've been thinking about her a lot, and I would wonder what my mum would be thinking um, about the things that I've done with my life over the last few years. Uh, mindful that she spent the first 11 years of her life growing up in a tin shed in a place called Kingston, and um, she was a, uh, a very um, fierce matriarch, and she was a strong woman. I remember in grade three, Mr. Gregory at North Gambia Primary School called me Kunta Kinte. Um, I didn't know anything about that, um, you know, Alex, Harry, uh, Alex um, Haley's book, Roots, uh, about the young slow boy. Um, I didn't know who he was or what that was, what, what, this, what this name was, and I went home and told mum, and I still remember mum dragging me up the corridor uh, with my hand held so tight, um, and, um, and uh, just the strength that she showed me um, about don't, you know, let people, you know, <laughs> stick up for yourself and things like that. And she proceeded to her strips off the principal, Mr. Connell. And I just thought, yeah, go mum, you know. And my mum was a very much, um, my, 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 I see the world is heavily through her eyes. Um, I don't get caught up on the, uh, the words and things like that. It's about the doing. And, um, you know, it's easy to talk about different things, but it's about doing what you're doing in your space, your own spheres of influence. So my takeaway from it all, you know, like this, I've learnt so much in the short space of time. Um, and I'm excited that I'll get on the plane and, and I'll, my, my, I'll, I'm, I'm richer for this experience. Um, and I've learnt some things about, you know, the experiences of my brothers and sisters from other communities. And I want to see our communities work together and I want to be that sort of vessel to sort of bring other mobs in, only because self-serving reasons, I'm tired of eating, you know, bush food and I want to eat some other sort of, uh, you know, I want to eat some more curries and some, uh, some other things from other cultures. I do love that. But all jokes aside, it's important. We're talking about the same perpetrator here. We're talking about the same system. And I think it's common sense that we all get on the same page and share and, and things like that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, I say that I'm really excited about the future. You know, the voice, get out there in your communities and support the voice and, you know, get behind it. I think it's very worthwhile. But also, too, this is our country and I want to be that space. This is our country to talk about these types of things and become that force of change. The momentum's there, it's going to be hard, but don't be afraid. Um, you know, just keep going and, you know, get somebody to hold you up when you're tired and weary and um, be careful of the story. Telling stories is hard work and also listening to the hard stories is hard work as well, but, you know, they have to be told. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, 4.25 now. You, uh, you want to jet off now to the airport because you don't want to get stuck in traffic and miss your flight. So can we give Phil a round of applause, please, as he runs off the stage? Thank you, Phil. Safe flight. We've got a few more minutes uh, until we're going to ask for you, some of your reflections as well, and Stacey's going to facilitate that. Um, so, allow him to say some goodbyes. How about what next? 
what are you going to do next? What or what would you like others to do next? That's a that's a big question and uh, a bit hard. I guess it's just back to, um, to the same old, really. Um, I guess the first port of call is I'm going to make sure everybody in my organization knows about this conference. So we support this conference in future. Okay. I think it's, it's, it's a cause that's worthwhile having DCA's name on it because um, we're supposed to be the uh, peak body in diversity and inclusion in Australia. So that's what's next in terms of in relation to this conference. Thank you. We've got that on camera, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble with my CEO. Anyway, um, and, and I guess um, in terms of um, what's next, yeah, it's really just continuing the anti-racism work that I do and taking some of the most amazing stories and, um, you know, um, suggestions and places that I was um, referred to by a lot of you that I spoke to over the last couple of days. Um, it's really putting into practice what we've been talking about in the last couple of days, really. It's doing, like um, when my brother was talking about, it's now actually doing the work is what, I, what we need to, yeah. to do. And hopefully staying in touch with all of you whose details I got and creating some community of support that, yeah. that continues beyond just today. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. It's a bit of a thinned out crowd for the afternoon. It's been, been a big couple of days, so I wanted to also acknowledge everyone who's still here as well for still being here on the Tuesday afternoon of this massive two days. Um, there will be a lot for each one of us to unpack, regardless of our experience of race and racism and whether we've had things reaffirmed or things, complete blind spots opened up to it. There's gonna be a lot of unpacking and, and emotional uh, homework to do um, after this as well. So uh, I just want to acknowledge that, your resilience uh, to share stories, to be a part of the conversation, to be brave and to, and to listen intently and to um, yeah, take on unfiltered, largely unfiltered, because it's still being recorded, so we're still, Adjusting to a degree, <laughs> but uh, it was pretty much unfiltered, and this is this is truth. And sometimes, you know, it's not, it's um, truth needs to be spoken before we can talk about justice and, and unity and peace and prosperity. As I said in the opening keynote, so uh, if the truth unsettles us, then um, that tells us something about us and our relationship with the truth. Um, so that's something that I usually start with in my training sessions: is let's talk about the feelings that can come up for us in a conversation about race, first and foremost. And then let's unpack why am I feeling this feeling. And that tells us a lot about our relationship with, with race and the dynamics. Um, I would like to also add with the what, what next is definitely do reach out to, to people you've met briefly or momentarily or had long conversations with me, particularly anyone, LinkedIn, um, email, Facebook, website, whatever. I think part of the strength of what we're trying to create with New Kind always has been is to create a stronger ecosystem uh, of change. Um, like we've discussed the collectivist, individualist kind of cultures and worldviews, uh, we require a collectivist worldview because that's our strength, that's where many of our cultural backgrounds actually come from as well. So let's um, make that our superpower and understand that no single individual or single organization uh, or you know, only the big organizations can, can do the work that needs to be done. We actually need to empower uh, the ecosystem so we can all survive in our spaces and either feel safe at work or feel safe enough to be able to do our own entrepreneurial type stuff um, and understand that, that the work is there and we're not competing against each other for the work because not, no single one of us can actually do all the work. So keep that in mind, the ecosystem, how are we supporting the ecosystem so that the ecosystem can support us? Because oftentimes we're taught to just take from the ecosystem, but how do we support the ecosystem around us? How can I share work? How can I have platforms? How can I share platforms, create platforms, that sort of stuff? Because um, that's where our true strength lies. Um, final thoughts, Dr. Virginia, before we hand over to Stacey to hear from the, from the audience. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know that I've got anything else to add to what I've just to what I've said already. Um, I don't know, final thoughts is, um, my email is virginia at dca.org.au. So it's out yes. there if you need to reach out, or um, if you're in Sydney, if you, if you want to catch up for 
you know, coffee or whatever um, and support each other in the work that we do. So, yeah, just I'm not very good at um, responding immediately to emails. Everyone knows this already. Fine. <laughs> uh, but, but I will respond. So that's my email address. Feel, reach out if you, if you want to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to invite... Uh, thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to invite Stacey up now to facilitate the next session. Um, and I will thank the sponsors again at the end, um, but I just thought it's worthwhile no noticing. Stacey is from One Red Step, uh, one of our event partners. Um, many of you already know her and the great work that Stacey does. So can you please give a big round of applause for Stacey? I'll give you this mic. Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you that I haven't met, my name's Stacey Ong. I am a Malaysian Chinese woman. Uh, and uh, I'm on this stolen, unceded land. And I'd like to acknowledge my mum. Like, shout outs to everyone's mum <laughs> uh, who have brought us here today and my ancestors who come from China. I think that's really important. Uh, so Irvin's given me like the hardest job of the day, which is like it's 4.30 on the Tuesday and the second day. And I'm going to invite you all after the last whew, two amazing, amazing days, just to take a deep breath and close your eyes and settle into your body. And feel into your body and where it's sitting right now. How do your feet feel? How does your back feel? How does your face feel? Notice any sensations in your body with kindness and compassion. And when you're ready, I invite you to come back to the space that we're in. And we will reflect on the last two days. Um, I was sitting next to Needy earlier, and what was really nice is I said, hey, can I sit down next to you? Uh, and she's like, of course. Because it feels like family now, after spending these two days together. And Irfan said in his uh, opening, we have loose molecular connections, something along those lines, and now those connections have tightened. And I think this is the magic of New Kind and the magic of the space that Irfan and Sophie curate, that we feel so safe, that it feels like family. So I'm going to invite you to, you to turn to the family member next to you. Uh, and if you aren't sitting next to somebody, find uh, the closest person. And just debrief, how are you feeling in your body right now? What's going on for you? And for me, this is a combination of both inspiration uh, and tiredness as well, um, and a feeling that there's a, a lot to do. So I'm going to give you a few moments to speak to your, your family member, your brother or your sister beside you, and um, have a conversation. And then I'll bring you back in five minutes. All right, everyone. Who want, we have some roving mics, I think, roving around. Who wants to share about how you're feeling? How are you feeling after these two days? Do we have mics running around at all? Or do you want to just... Who wants to go first and talk about how they feel? How are they feeling after these two days? <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Um, we had a discussion here and we, um, well, first of all, grateful for the event organisers for putting on a space for all of us to feel 
safe, to be able to hear um, what we've been feeling in our um, embodied, you know, I loved your embodiment exercise of what we've embodied throughout our whole lives, to hear it reflected back on a stage, on a platform, um, was very healing. So um, lovely to meet with friends old and new, um, looking forward to keeping contact with people. And we both really feel a sense of hope and optimism. Mm. There's such an enormous uh, intellect, energy and passion of so many different groups of people doing amazing work in these huge um, topics, which we're finding, you know, it's like a big meal, hard to digest all in one go. Um, but we'll take away a small um, takeaway for ourselves and just keep going and keep staying connected and looking forward to next year. Thank you. Shout out to Judith. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. I've been kind of trying to fly under the radar. <laughs> um, my name's Juju. I have been working with Sophie and Afan for the last couple months as um, doing work on branding, design, marketing, visual communications, where I'm at. It's my jam. Um, I actually left uh, where I was working um, because of the inequalities and injustices, and um, I get, I've always kind of felt it growing up in a white Australia, uh, but I couldn't, couldn't really pinpoint what it was. Um, and it was, I guess, a couple months ago where that I um, actually got the strength to actually address uh, some of the problems that I saw in my organisation. Um, and decided to leave. And now I'm, you know, freelancing, doing, helping a Sophie and a Fan, and um, I'm hoping to, um, you know, with my work, um, I help elevate businesses and brands and try and um, spread their message through their marketing. Um, so now I'm on this trajectory of I'm only going to be doing that for businesses that um, align with my values and are on the same course. So, um, yeah. I know there's a lot of um, cool people out here doing really cool things. So if you need any help, um, yeah, you know where to find me. Yeah. We will, we will definitely be calling you Juju, and I can't wait to hang out and work with you. Does anyone else want to share? Some I'll, I'll quickly share. Um, I'm feeling really fired up and excited. All the speeches are so inspiring. I've never had much success with my activism until um, I got contacted by a prisoner illegally detained in Indonesia about a week ago. And suddenly we raised all this money and I've been working with the Ukraine embassy as well. And just to, even though the, these particular issues I haven't worked with, fundraising, um, gender-based violence and more cultural violence, um, it's given me all this um, inspiration to help out on these issues that I haven't tried to fundraise for and that I haven't really got involved with. So uh, was that the last one as well? So thank you, Irfan, so much for creating these spaces where the words are spoken in a way that uh, you know, no one's heard as much truth and as much free speech and free thinking. So thank you, Eva. Yes. Hi, I'm Nusrat Meraji. I'm a barrister and I've just recently arrived in Melbourne two months ago. And thank you. And so I am a fresh immigrant. And um, starting from how I ended up here at New Kind to how I basically got the tickets to be here to being here the last two days, it's been an absolutely surreal experience, especially because um, as a person of color, uh, since I've landed in Melbourne, I have received so much warmth. I've received, like, I've met some of the most amazing people here. Um, and even then, I still felt a bit out of place. Not a bit, actually, I'll just be honest, it's a safe space, right? Um, um, yes, I felt a lot out of place. And um, 
at one point, because I couldn't find anyone to relate to, like I couldn't find anyone, any uh, space where to have these conversations, I just started internalizing it. And in a sense, just telling myself, you know what, it's gonna pass, it's fine. Probably making a big deal in my head. And then I came here yesterday, and then today, and I'm like, no, like, you know, it was almost like I was gaslighting myself, to be honest. So, and it's just been absolutely profound to be here. Thank you so much for the work that you do, because yeah. um, I, I honestly, I'm leaving with a sense of empowerment like I haven't felt since I arrived here. It's honestly, shout out to everybody who's, who moves countries, and it's, it's just, uh, it's not smooth. The transition can be very challenging, and uh, especially as a person of color. And um, to have the space and to have made the connections that I have in the last two days, and the friends, and the networks, organizations, I will be forever grateful. I will absolutely be forever grateful for this opportunity and definitely going to pay this forward. Shout out to Tasneem, uh, who's the reason why I'm here. She's at the back, <laughs> Tasneem Chopra. Um, we actually met physically for the first time yesterday. I just knew her through Instagram and just randomly messaged her and then she randomly messaged me back and now here I am talking to all of you. So um, that's how I believe we move forward. So I'm definitely going to be paying this forward as well to someone one day who needs it, inshallah. And um, till then, just thank you. Thank you for creating this space. So grateful for all of you. And thank you just for making this space. Thank you. Hello, my name is Faizé Parks. I am from Children See, Children Do. I just wanted to say that I'm grateful grateful for new kind enterprise. I'm grateful for Sophie, uh, the beloved wife of this gentleman, Erfan, who has uh, worked very hard to make this happen for you guys. And what would be lovely is if we all contacted them and offered our services to help it become a better one next year and the next. So my request is, let's, up, let's step up and let's do it with joy. Say, hey, guys, we're here. We can offer such and such, as, such as this lovely young lady who offered her services, and such as one, a one step, red step, and everyone else, just go, everyone who's supported. Let's do our little, we might not be a brand name, but we can all put our hand up and say, we'll help you guys. We will make it even better each year with you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, uh, can I ask, uh, sorry, did you, wanna, did you wanna tell your story? Um, maybe I'll let you tell your story and then I wanna ask one final question to kind of close us and start us wrapping up, if it's okay. Go for it. Can I have 10 seconds while she walks Oh, up? please, go yeah. for it. Um, so I've been not working for a huge amount of time, but I've never been in a room of such inspiring people mm. um, that has, you know, brought so many things to the table and new ideas and new ways of thinking and, you know, there's so much to do, but it's so exciting that we, you know, I don't know if in my lifetime or the next lifetime, but we're moving in that right direction. Um, and I've never been in a room of such diverse people who are here for the same cause and to make the world a better place, and it's... So exciting, so thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love that. Oh, Khalees wants to say something. Come on up. Perfect, we've got a microphone. Um, and can I just add to that and say, well, that was mine and jo Joanne, shout out to the amazing Joanne who I work with um, at One Red Step. Uh, that was our experience last year, that we came last year and we loved it so much and loved the space that was created that we have you know, tried, to, tried to support and tried to work. Uh, and support the work of New Kind. Um, I'm going to hand over to Khalees to say something. Fantastic. Oops, sorry. Hi, guys. Uh, so, um, my name is Khalees, um, and I am a fourth year Duke student um, at in from the United States. Um, and I got 
I met a lot of you like over this past few weeks, but I wanted to introduce myself for those who haven't met me. Um, and I found out about the NewCon conference through Irfan's LinkedIn page. Um, and after searching like the searching LinkedIn for topics that had interested me, but I had never really had the opportunity to discuss before. Um, and so right immediately as I clicked on the new kind website, I just knew that like I was gonna go to this conference, um, even though it was in Australia. And so uh, the journey to getting here was like part dedication, part serendipity, and it all unfolded about a week um, before the new kind start date. Um, and so as I made my way to Australia, I was asked a couple of times like, what brought me here and like how many other people from your school are coming or a general sense of like, you came all the way here for this, like that's it, you know? Um, and it did give me a little bit of pause in my decision making at first, um, but that was really, the fact that I came was really clear after I heard Irfan's introductory speech as a lot of people have mentioned. Um, and yeah, that speech um, was really incredible for me. Um, it really explained like the outlook on life that I had been developing in the US um, in better words than I could have managed. Um, and I hope that one day we can all think of the world as connected and see the need for unity and togetherness um, as the answer to our ailments. Um, and also FYI, Irfan, I'm gonna be sharing your uh, introductory speech to all my friends so that we can spread that message. Um, but yeah, and like um, people have mentioned today, like the weak molecular bond that kind of brought us all together. Um, having been here for two days, I couldn't agree more that it was definitely a part of my destiny, like that I was meant to come here. Um, like halfway through day one, we were already having conversations about like the relationship between power and community and using your privilege to stand up for humanity. And like these are conversations um, that I have never had before and were really enriching and just um, impactful on my life. Uh, and so like being able to connect with all of you and talk about our outlooks, stories, philosophies uh, has really been rewarding for me. Um, so there's one thing about the speech and our conversations that um, I think we've touched on today, and that is it can definitely be upsetting and troubling to think about the fact that we're not operating at our full human potential. But I think rather than just being troubling, like it shows what we've discussed, um, shows that we can really approach this with hope and excitement. Um, because we are, because we're putting energy towards these topics now, uh, just imagine like how beautiful and rich and full of possibilities the world has to become um, once we shift our attentions elsewhere and once we're able to shift our attentions elsewhere because we are doing all of this um, work now. Um, and so I feel like my story can kind of be a testament to like, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Uh, because we've heard about like all the systems that need fixing and like now we have the opportunity to dream and like imagine what like a new kind of world could look like. Um, and like abundance is available to all of us. It's really just about um, going out there and fighting for it. Um, so I hope that like you can fill your heart with happiness as you think about the future of a positive and fulfilling world where we all thrive. Um, and I also like to take this time to just thank the people and departments at Duke University that allowed me to be here today. Um, and so that's the Sanford School of Public Policy, the Office of Sustainability, Dr. Bokar Ba in the Department of Economics, um, Dr. William Darity at the Samuel Dubois Cook Society for Social Equity, and Dean Blackshear, the Dean of Students for Duke University. Um, and also, I'd also like to thank Irfan and Sophie for sponsoring me <laughs> um, here as well. And without you guys' support, I would not have been able to get here for sure. Um, and I'd also like to thank all of you for being such great companions on this journey. Um, 
Also, shameless plug, I am circulating a survey that's meant to be taken by like practitioners, community members, and experts who are directly impacted by social movements. So that's definitely all of you guys. So survey coming out. And it's about um, like economic issues and basically to find like your views on corporations that interact with social issues. Um, so that will be hitting the email soon. But to conclude, I think there's one thing that I know for certain, and that's as we move toward a sustainable society, the world will blossom. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Khalees. How good was that? I had no idea that that was, I had no idea that that was how you got here, Khalees. That is like amazing. What an amazing story. Um, in, okay, last few minutes, I just want to say a couple of things. Obviously, thank you. Thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you for listening to that uh, voice that said, what is this new kind thing about I should go? Or the other girl that I met before that's been coming since 2019. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you to Irfan, Sophie, all of the tech guys, Faran, Joe, Juju, Hala, all of the um, people who are on panels. All of that uh, energy and presence that everyone has given us has contributed to the two days and those tighter molecular bonds. Um, in the last five minutes, I might ask us to think about and consider what stories we want to tell now, what stories, new stories are we creating? Because in New Kind, it's like there's a lot of information and it is fantastic, but it's well, what, what stories are we leaving here with? What stories do we want to create? because that is part of the imagining of a new kind of world. So I'll ask you just to maybe have a like one minute, two minute talk to the person next to you about what kind of story you want to tell um, and create, and then we'll quickly debrief and then wrap up. All right, how are we going? How are you all doing? Do we have some new stories that we want to tell? Or some old stories that haven't been heard before? I, um, I know from myself, I don't think, uh, I don't think my mum's story has been told, you know? Um, what was it like for her? And what, is, what does it continue to be like for her? Um, so I'm really keen to hear from you, what are some of the stories that you will want to create, want to tell, want to share coming out of, of New Kind that have inspired you? Roving mic, yeah, over there. <laughs> Is it working? Um, the stories I want to hear yeah. are stories um, that are out of the white, white lens. I want to hear more stories and languages of our culture, of our people, of our food. And I want to connect with people outside of, um, you know, colonization. And I really want decolonization to be something that we carry throughout everything that we do. I think um, uh, earlier uh, someone talked about whitewashing and I definitely was whitewashed. Um, I come from a country that was colonized by the British. My entire identity is based on British colonialism. I'm speaking a colonizer's language, and I want to um, continue embracing all the different languages that my ancestors have taught me and continue embracing that. So I encourage everyone here to take ownership of your culture and your ancestors and listen to the stories of your families, because that's so powerful. Yeah. Thank you, Edie. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I don't have that many. Um, I think mine's very much the same. I want um, stories of unification, stories um, of family. I think ethnically we are all so similar in so many ways. We all have Asian parenting stories. We all have stories of um, being told that we've been whitewashed. We've 
um, have hilarious stories that join us together. I know that I walk into a room and I usually see a brown or an Asian person at a party and I'm like, hey. <laughs> um, so just continue to stay, share those stories about how you had smelly lunch boxes and how your parents forced you to never wax your eyebrows and like <laughs> share your trauma, share your humor and like, I guess, unite in, in all of our stories. Thank you. Hello. I think I'm gonna take away from here, I'm definitely taking away from here, is what I'm gonna be telling are stories of empowerment. Because I feel like the space that we created in the last two days, we didn't just talk about what the problems are, but we also talked, we, we left everything, every session was left on a positive note. And I think that's so important that people go away, whether it's a race issue, whether it's a gender issue, whatever world crisis, global crisis we're going through, I feel like empowerment is what will eventually make the world go around and what does make the world go around. So I think definitely stories of empowerment. And also, uh, I am uh, ending this conference on a note personally, which is uh, feeling an immense level of love for my culture, my family, especially um, yesterday's Invisible Woman. It was so powerful. I just sat there crying because I was thinking of my mother, I was thinking of my grandmother, and it's all their stories, you know? It's all their stories, like growing up and feeling that shame for uh, them not being fluent in one language, or, you know, like thinking somehow, you know, that defines them, whereas there's so much more than that. Not containing anybody, I mean, in a box that's labeled, you know? Like we're all limitless, and it's just, the last two days have just been a solid affirmation of that. So carrying that on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I'm Abe for the people that I haven't had the pleasure to meet today or yesterday. So I came into this with the privilege, in inverted commas, of being white, male, having all, all the, and, and up until this morning, someone who used to think of myself as a proud ally in this space. And those that I've talked to in the last six hours since that early morning session, I'm feeling really uncomfortable about wearing that title, Ella. I don't even know if I should be wearing this scarf, but you know, uh, <laughs> I, I've got to be doing more active stuff. We've all got to be doing more active stuff. So I've got two thoughts and I'll just do it in, in two minutes. I saw the movie, which I think many of you have referred to, um, not two nights ago here, but last week at the Immigration Museum, Ferguson Rises. And that taught me so much. If you haven't seen it, please go to see it. But the director was here, and the father of the boy that was killed was here, and I, I had the chance to be at a Q&A with them at the Migration Museum. And I asked a question about being an ally in that space. And the director of Ferguson Rises gave me a five-minute solid answer, which I'd like to share with everybody in one second, just the one key sentence. He said, if you want to be a really good ally, Always remember how you're doing it and what's going on and what consequences you might be causing. And a few people, white people in the audience, were scratching their heads. Where was he going with this? And he went on to say, there were some people at some of the rallies to stand up for my son, oh, this man's son, after he died. And the police started taking cannons and, and tear gas and stuff on other people at those rallies in Ferguson. But when they realised there were white people there, they did pause for a moment because they didn't want to hurt them mm. in the killing back. But what you don't know, when the media went away and those white people were no longer standing next to the black person from Ferguson, they beat up the people that were next to them or particularly took out... Because whilst you were there, you were creating a safe space. But in the meantime, maybe they'd set you up, maybe you were a friend. For whatever reason, you've got to always remember that your allyship can create a, a challenge, a, a life and death situation if you're not careful for the people around you. And how many white allies think about that as they go about their their allyship. So to me, the takeout and the story and the narrative that I would take from this would be, there are so many people that are not in this echo chamber that we're all in right now. They're not here because they've never heard of New Kind. They're not here because 
they have heard of it, but that's not their sort of thing. They're not here because they don't think about the sorts of issues that we're thinking about. So instead of being a pessimist, because I agree that it's nice to have a positive ending, what can we do with that fact, with that opportunity? Every conversation, people we meet, the, the more racist they are, the more bigoted they are, the more homophobic they are, all the more reason that we've got to use all of our privileges of everyone in this room to have one-to-one -one grassroots conversation because I don't believe it's going to improve by the UN and the government leaders and the prime ministers talking to it. No, nah, that's not going to fix it. It's going to happen at this level, at this level of purity, of love, of connection, of grassroots. Thank you, New Kind, for reminding me of that. Thank you. Um, Asil. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that I would love, I would love if um, New Kind became more of a movement than a one-off event. And saying that, I think you are, like you're looking around people in the room, people that you, we might meet in the street, people that you can see in the Hoover that I still have no code for. <laughs> Otherwise you will always see hi, 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 hi from me. <laughs> um, and kind of really don't assume that person next to you that you met here really have the right connections around them to make new kind a movement. We are those people. And I think the more we connect and not assume, but say, hey, I would love to have people around me that really think the same. I would like together to have more conversations, more connections, more of this. The more it is bigger, the, the bigger and the full, full, fuller the place is, and the more people coming because they have heard it from those they love and they trust, not from social media like I came, even if like I asked Maria, I want a ticket, it's so good. But anyway, but it's kind of like, I came here accidentally and I'm so happy that I did. I just want everybody that come here to be purposely coming to this. And I think that's not on Airfan, that's on all of us. So I think we have to make the promise in the door, in our way out, that next year I'm bringing five different people that I think they should listen to what we have listened to. Thank you, Asil. Someone? Is there any, uh, okay. Yep, all right, last one, and then we will say something. I just wanted to say there is the old adage that if you want to go mm. fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. And that is some of the things I think we've been talking about, Asim. Thank you. Um, J James here from, um, si from City of Port Phillip. Uh, this is my first time actually um, attending the New Kind Conference. I've never heard of it in previous years, so I realised that it has been around for like um, several years. And what I do picked up is that um, I really hope the dominant theme this year seems to be about race and gender. I hope that if we talk about true so social justice, inclusion, diversity, whatever, it, it, it shows a cut across other themes as well, which I believe have, which I heard from Jordan here had been discussed in previous conferences. What I do hope to see next year would, would, would really be other topics about, um, it could be about LGBTIQ, it could be about people living with disability, people living near the poverty line, uh, homeless people, and how do we solve these issues as well? Uh, people, you know, who have certain, um, um, I would say, some kind of, of a di disability that does not allow them to participate in civic life as fully as, you know, other able people, um, which I hope, you know, some of these topics and themes would be explored in the, the next um, conference. Uh, but on that note, I agree with uh, what Abe um, said uh, earlier on about, I hope really um, there is, um, what I do notice that uh, in a conference, it is very easy to get into some kind of echo chamber because we are meeting like-minded people. While it's great because it gives us affirmation we know that we are in a company of like many people who think like us, and it's very easy for us to like, gain momentum. At the same time, it is also important for us to engage people who are different from us. Because if, if we want to talk about diversity, inclusion, equity, then I think we need to model that, which means we would need to engage people who are very different from us. And I do, I do agree, I think it was um, the lady over there, sorry, I didn't get your name, who said that, yeah, next year we should get in other people. Um, you know, and for example, I would love to you know, see more men in this room because they need to hear this so that they can effect the, those changes as well. Yeah, um, yeah, Thank that's you. my point. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.
Ethan, did you want to come up here and close? <laughs> Ethan, everybody. Thank you so much. She uh, pulled that off brilliantly in the last minute. Thank you so much, Tacey. Five minutes notice. Um, I'll make it very brief. I haven't prepared a speech. I just wanted to start um, very quickly with thanking the people who made this possible. Uh, RMIT, our venue sponsor, the wonderful tech team who provided the audiovisual support. Um, I need to thank uh, Kiriakos up here. Please give him a round of applause from Just Gold. Uh, Just Gold Digital Agency is our creative partner and they've been filming everything. They're going to be cutting, topping and tailing all these video clips and putting them out there into the world. So these conversations will reverberate uh, much further, so thank them. I would like to also thank Hala from the Institute of Nonviolence, who, who you've met yesterday on the panel, um, for her support over the last few months, uh, moral support, uh, weekly catch-ups on the phone, um, and yeah, for facilitating and curating the panel yesterday as well, so perfectly. Um, I'd like to also thank you, Stacey, again, and Joe from One Red Step, um, our other event partners. Joe's here, there you are. Um, thank you for your support as well. Um, and I know uh, everyone, rightfully so, has thanked Sophie uh, for everything she's done, but I needed to say it again overtly that this part, uh, this conference uh, was largely organized by Sophie. Uh, you need to know that. Like, the lion's share of the work uh, is Sophie. Um, uh, the detail, the attention to detail, from flight times to booking of accommodations um, to liaising with presenters, uh, all of that stuff. Um, Sophie's managed most of that, um, and I wanted to thank you, sir, for making this possible. Um, uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to be able to n not have to be as involved in the future as well. I mean, new kind should definitely continue, but it doesn't have to be me um, here. Um, so just keep that in mind, Zof, um, because uh, um, I would like to eventually get back to what I mentioned the other day. Um, which was writing poetry, or growing potatoes, or planting fruit trees. Sure, I might end with that. Um, I don't want to be talking about race, as I mentioned, and most of us here don't want to have to be dealing with some of the issues we're dealing with, with like homelessness, and gendered violence, and race equity. Um, there are other ambitions I'm sure many of us had as children, as teenagers, uh, up until our adulthood. Um, other things that, you know, uh, perhaps more fulfilling to our souls. Um, but we feel um, a responsibility to our planet, to our community, to the sacrifices of our parents, whatever it might be, to the global ecosystem, to, to do something that is required of us rather than what it is that our heart's desire actually is. And that might just be what we need to do because of the unique and critical point in human history that we find ourselves in. And that in itself is another honor that we have um, to be at that point where we, maybe generations or centuries down the track, they will be able to say that there was a couple of generations that shifted the trajectory of the planet, and we get to be alive and active in that particular time, which I find um, an absolute honor and blessing, and, I, and that's part of what keeps me going, is knowing how short our earthly life is, um, the fact that the earth has its own consciousness, and we are a, a less than an ant within that larger motion, the movement, the momentum of this planet. So to be alive and to be, uh, to have agency and, and you know, um, to be able to contribute in any way, shape or form to that is, is a huge honor that uh, is what allows me to get up every morning. I know some of the issues we've been talking about, whether it's climate, human rights, health disparities, incarceration rates, economic justice, aren't the, the easiest things to talk about. But, and I, and I, so I want to remind us that that's not the the goal isn't to be fighting for the rest of our lives and um, and if we keep the goal in mind then the work becomes better and more effective um, and the goal eventually as we have kind of mentioned a few times is the the unity the peace and prosperity of the human family on this planet and I know we think we're really advanced and intelligent and technologically developed and all the rest of it, but um, I feel that we have not even scratched the surface of human capacity and capability as far as what we can do creatively, artistically, technologically, the mysteries of the universe that we could still unravel, the mysteries of the soul that we could still learn about. There is so much that we don't even know that we don't know about 
once we address these basic core issues of housing, education, healthcare, and elimination of prejudice along the lines of race and gender and ability and sexuality and just these really basic like things that we I feel should have been resolved maybe a few centuries ago. Imagine what we are possible of creating when we get that done. And we might not be able to partake in that glorious world, but our souls would have been a part of that process. And I think that's something I'd like to leave you with, to leave you with the hope and the joy that you need to keep you going until we next, next meet, is to just keep the, that in mind of how, uh, how much of an honor and a blessing it is to be alive and to have consciousness and ability to be able to affect change in the world today. So with that, thank you. And um, I don't know if we've got time for a poem, to be honest, not today. Um, I, I, no, 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 no. I'm not, I, I won't indulge you, and, uh, and I'm not going to take any more. We have had an incredible time. I want to thank you all for being here right to the very last moment. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, stay in touch. Love you all. Talk to you soon.